Credit Suisse, Morgan Stanley and Capital Economics, to name but a few institutes, expecting a cut to interest rates following comments by Governor Carney that some monetary policy easing was likely in coming months. Others expecting the Bank of England to set the stage for a rate cut later in August. It would be the first move in rates since March 2009. For more, I'm joined by Mark Bailey of Think Securities Live. Mark, let's start by looking at the Bank of England because I do think this is a potential trouble point uh, for the markets. It's about an 80% bet currently uh, that they will be looking at cutting rates uh, when they make that decision uh, tomorrow. What, how likely, though, what are you probability are you putting on it that they could surprise us by not moving? Or do you think Mark Carney has been very clear that that's his intention? Yeah, good morning, Carrington. I mean, as you rightly say, the, the financial futures markets are pricing in an 80% chance of a, a new 25 basis point cut to 0.25% uh, by the Bank of England. In terms of The Economist, as you highlighted, it's around about 30 out of 54 of the, the survey that I have seen uh, is expecting a cut. I, I mean, I think they'll, Mark Carney will have to cut um, on Thursday. I think otherwise he's going to lead to potentially disappointing the markets, and the markets are looking for that additional comfort, additional support that the Bank of England really is there behind um, you know, the financial markets in terms of trying to provide some support and stimulus uh, given the, the shock of Brexit. So I think it would be a bit more of a, a shock and I don't think he would be willing to, to risk that in terms of the, uh, the comments that he has made previously, wh wh which you rightly point out, which do indicate that you know, he'd probably like to move sooner um, on Thursday rather than wait until, until August. Um, and I think he did see, you know, in terms of, you know, where the mm -hmm. currency is as well, you know, even on the back of Theresa May being a, essentially confirmed as Prime Minister, which you will get later today in, in the UK, you did see a, a, a short, um, small rally in sterling, but that's still, you know, well below um, pre-Brexit levels of around about 132 to the US dollar. So, you know, it's only at the highs of a week um, and it's risen for the fir um, three days in a row, but it's still well below what it was pre-Brexit and I don't think you, you saw that rally and I think it would, have, it would have been a relief rally as well because that whole EU situation still hasn't been resolved. Mm. Um, and I guess in, in that regard, you know, the EU is saying, well, now that uh, the UK has a prime minister or will have later today, they can really expedite the, um, the, article, the triggering of the Article 50. But, you know, Theresa May has time and time again said that that's a probably a 2017 um, trigger point and she probably won't do it uh, do it this year so it's all in the UK's hands so I think once you get kind of a, a bit of a relief rally once you the markets get over the fact that the UK now has a Prime Minister now has a bit of leadership um, I th it's still going to be a very long drawn out process with a, a lot of question marks you know one of which is does it have to go through Parliament to actually mm. be able to, to, to leave the UK and it's not clear whether the Parliament would vote to, to, li to leave and so that maybe throws open to another general election where the uh, electorate has another chance to decide on whether the UK leaves or not. So that's, so that's <coughs> one issue that Europe is dealing with, it's kind of its left flank, its upper left flank, but its uh, underbelly continues to look the weakest part of the, of the grouping. In particular, we were talking before the break about the, the slow moving uh, wreck that is effectively the, the, the Italian banking system. Uh, I'm, we're gonna pull up a couple of charts just to kind of illustrate the, the, the crazy moves down that we've seen as far as share prices are concerned. Uh, Monte Del Pace is kind of the, the trigger point. We'll start with Deutsche Bank, which is kind of a broader story that we've seen. Uh, both the Brexit hit uh, taking an effect on and Deutsche Bank, but also what is kind of a banking crisis. Uh, maybe not at a crisis point just yet, but at the moment it's hard to see how Europe is going to resolve those issues. So that's Deutsche Bank. That is not even directly involved uh, with the Italian banking crisis. Uh, with Monte de Pachi, the really the trigger point that's uh, currently uh, moving through. Now, the, the share price collapse, if you even look even further of, say, a 10-year period, is just extraordinary turn down, uh, turn down. But, Mark Bailey, the bondholders are the key factor to be resolved in this issue. A lot of talk is that the ECB is pressuring the Italian government to effectively make the bondholders, uh, the junior bondholders, take a haircut in order to restructure the debt of this, uh, of this bank. The Italians are pushing back on that because a lot of these bondholders are retail investors, mum and dads. It's going to be politically painful, but also it's going to have an effect, you would think, on the Italian economy. Talk us through how this affects the broader bond markets and how does this affect the access to debt that other companies who are trying to, access, trying to get their money uh, through to, to fund whatever part of their business they need help in. Yeah, that, that's right. And if, I mean, if you look at the share price of, of Deutsche Bank year to date, it's probably down around about 50%. And uh, 
commodity the capacity is probably down around about 80 percent so the main hits have been to the equity holders but as you rightly point out those those hybrid holders or as they call them in in the uh, european union cocoa uh, contingent capital instruments uh, very similar to the hybrids here they have been very very volatile you know the deutsche bank uh, instruments started the year at around about 92 cents dropped down to the low 70s and have recovered slightly you know in those monte paschi uh, hybrids as well uh, have traded you know down 13 cents in a day to 64 cents and are hovering kind of around about that level now and as you rightly point out the key part of this whole puzzle is that the holders of those instruments are, are largely retail investors they're the mom and pop uh, depositors that have again been convinced to buy these instruments because they see them as being uh, very similar to bank deposits even though the risks associated with them are nowhere near the same as bank deposits so that they can uh, pick up a higher return than their very low yielding bank deposits and that um, additional layer of complexity as you rightly point out does feed into the whole bail-in bail-out mechanism which creditors will receive haircuts which ones will be we will be saved and if it was institutional investors, it's much easier for the government and for the EU to say, okay, you knew what you were doing, you knew the, what the risks were associated with those instruments, and you're gonna be haircut, you know, 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar, all completely wiped out. Whereas as you say, because it's the mom and pop investors that are, own these instruments, and because it's those retail investors, it's a much more difficult situation because there'll be political ramifications, as you rightly point out, uh, on top of the economic ramifications as well. Um, so, and it's very interesting because that's very similar to the Australian hybrid market, which again is largely retail, is largely owned by the mom and pop investors. So again, we might get an indication of how that bailout regime will actually work in practice. Because as you say, the EU is pushing back and saying, no, you need to um, write down those uh, all the way through the capital structure before we you're allowed to inject capital. And the Italian government is, as you would expect, trying to get that capital injection before writing down certain instruments to you know, probably try and protect its political future, which you know is in Italy, as you are elsewhere in the world, and especially in Europe, seeing those right-wing anti-establishment mm. parties gain more and more political ground. It's a fascinating subject. I know Tony Davidson would have a comment. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Hopefully, we can do it again later. Mark Bailey, thank you for your time. Tony Davidson, as always, a pleasure.